Welcome to the Fat Emperor podcast. I'm your host, Ivor Cummins. One of the points we were discussing today, which I maybe didn't emphasize enough, mm. is that when you go back and look for the association, the value, the, the hazard ratio for cholesterol, it is so low, it's utterly meaningless. Mm. And yet, when I show that to cardiologists, it's like, so you put insulin resistance and diabetes, metabolic syndrome, high up and then way down is cholesterol. I said, but how can you focus on this one and ignore those? And it's like you didn't ask the question. They just, they just glass over. They don't see it. It's frightening because the person who put me on the, the low carb, low fat diet, I should say, was Professor Lionel Opie, who's, who's, we've had a great relationship with him. And I only realized now that he can't change his mind. He's, he's been a cholesterol man all his life and he would never change. Although he said, you know, some of what you say is correct, he could never mm. admit that more than a little mm. bit was correct. But if your whole life has been prescribing statins for high cholesterol, and that's all you've ever done. You know, the interesting thing, I've, mm. I've been in cardiac rehabilitation. I started the first cardiac rehabilitation clinic in South Africa in 1977 or so. Mm. And what was interesting was that the cardiologists never referred these patients, although we, we charged nothing, essentially nothing. And we would have a, a total pro program, including nutrition, of course, it was the wrong nutrition, but exercise, relaxation and so on, everything. No one was interested. The cardiologists weren't interested. And I've realized cardiologists have never been interested in prevention. And so when we come along and say, actually, you can prevent the disease by changing the diet, it's, it's not of interest to them. So, so this, the, the lecture I gave today, the advance that in my own thinking, which mm. came about also as I was researching the evidence for, for my hearing, is that it's fatty liver which causes the atherogenic dyslipidemia. And I think that was really interesting because mm. the hepatologists, the liver specialists, have fallen upon it by error. And in this particular study, they, as you know, they did my, liver biopsies. Yeah. And that's what doing liver biopsies in 200 people, I wouldn't do it on one person because it's such a high risk. So they did their 200 biopsies and then they found that if you had the fatty liver, that was the relationship with atherogenic dyslipidemia. So now we've got the direct link between high carbohydrate diets and atherogenic dyslipidemia. So it's really now, it's not the diet heart hypothesis, it's the diet liver heart hypothesis. Absolutely. And that's now... The irony is the cardiologists aren't going to be the people looking after your heart. It's going to be the lipid specialists. And they will eventually, because they're not committed to the cholesterol theory, they will fall upon it that it's actually carbohydrates causing the problem. And that's going to be a moment, a great moment, because it will be now the hepatologists versus the cardiologists, not, not us as nutritionists and so on, against the cardiologists. That is a crucial link. And yeah, the endocrinologists and the hepatologists, I mean, they're sitting on a gold mine in a way. Exactly. Because if they can be hugely effective with all their patients and seem to be, mm. you know, they'll actually be financially incentivized to do the right thing yeah, as exactly. opposed to the cardio. Exactly. exactly. But timing, well, we'll see. Um, I had a, you know, a few weeks ago, I had another moment, mm. great moment. So okay. I was originally funded by a company called Discovery Health in South Africa, which, which also acts in Europe and, and the United mm. Kingdom and in the United States. And uh, I, when I converted from the high carb to the high fat mm. diet, they weren't very happy because they reward people for being healthy, but to be healthy, you have to eat the low fat diet. So I came along and said, actually, low carbohydrate diet is better. Mm. And that didn't go down well. And whenever we spoke, although I was their funded professor, they were kind of getting a little bit further away from me Very until, until I retired. Mm. And one of their senior officials, senior managers, I met him a few weeks ago and he said, Tim, I want to apologize to you because we never took you seriously. And I said, well, so what happened? So his daughter developed type 1 diabetes. Oh. And all of a sudden, within a week, they converted from vegetarianism, high carbohydrate diets. They just got rid of all the carbohydrate in, it, in their pantries and so on and converted to the high fat diet. And the daughter's diabetes is well controlled. She doesn't require insulin at the moment, but she will require insulin sometime. Mm. But she, it was just amazing. And, and, you know, that's the sort of thing that has to happen. You have to have this, this tragic person as I had with my father mm. and, and in a sense with my own health and then you start to realize.
Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen, a free viewing of the Widowmaker movie on the far right, and myself and Dr. Gerber's book, Eat Rich, Live Long, on the left. Otherwise, please do subscribe to the audio podcast. Thanks.